Lightning. I'm supposed to talk to you about lightning today, and lightning is something that we are told strikes the same place never more than once. This is actually a myth because if any of you are pilots, you know that if your your plane has been struck thousands and thousands of times by lightning, and lightning is a metaphor for inspiration. And I believe that many of you have had brilliant, big ideas, and we have them all the time. Lightning strikes us all the time, but we don't want to seize that bolt of lightning and do something about it. And what I want to talk to you today about is how to decide what to do when lightning strikes. How to react? Whether you should run away in terror, or whether you should grasp it and simply let it burn you up and do something. And I'm going to talk to you about an idea that I had、um, a few years ago, which I never knew that I would have, which is the idea that I would create the largest performing arts work in the history of music and theatre. This, of course, is a very big thing, and、um, I have to start off by talking about Richard Wagner a little bit because、uh, there is an iconic work called *The Ring Cycle*. I'm sure you're all aware of it. It consists of four very long operas. They are performed over over four nights in Germany in the Bayreuth Festival, where this is performed、uh, frequently. You have to wait in a waiting list for ten years to get tickets.、Uh, the opera begins with the gods basically creating the universe, and ends with the destruction of everything. The whole world is destroyed. Everything, it's, it's all gone. And then it is reborn. So I, you have to admit that the plot is pretty big. And it never occurred to me that I would try to challenge. Such a vast work, until, sort of by accident, I was asked to compose an opera for the Indian American. I have to say this very carefully. It's not the American Indian Society, but the Indian American Society of、uh, Houston, Texas. They asked me to create a new opera for a small production in Houston, and. The idea was that it could be about anything, as long as it had something to do with India. Now, I have always thought about the Ten Lives of the Buddha, the Tosa Chart. These are iconic works that, within them, contain two thousand years of great wisdom, and they are stories. They are simple parables that tell very complex stories. And I took the first of these stories and adapted it as、um, as an opera. It was performed in Houston. It turned out that it was the that the Silent Prince, as it was called, was in fact the first specifically Buddhist opera to be performed in the Western world. And although the story it's about a young man, the Buddha is re, is born as a as a young prince, and his father says to him. Son, you know, you have come of age, and I'm going to teach you how to be a king. So here's an evil criminal, and as as a special birthday present, I'm going to have you give the order to cut off his head. And the prince says to his thinks to himself, if I disobey my father, this is a terrible, terrible sin. And yet, if I kill somebody, it is also a terrible sin. How can I deal with this in this moral dilemma? And his reaction to it. Is to retreat into complete silence and to never speak again, and that is the story, the first story of the Buddhist,、uh, the Ten Lives of the Buddha. So I saw that this story is really a very modern story because what does a, what happens when a child today has an intolerable dilemma, intolerable trauma? 
What, ha what happens when he repeat, retreats into a world of silence, a, a fantasy world? So really, by writing an opera set in ancient India, I was really also writing an opera about modern dysfunctional families and psychological problems that all modern people can understand. So anyway, this, this opera happened. It was quite successful. And then a few, a few years later, it happened that I set the second of the 10 lives of the Buddha to music because the Thai government was in a bit of a panic. Um, uh, there, had been, there had just been a, a bit of political unrest and we were planning a big international festival and no one was gonna come. So they said, can you whip up something very quickly? And, and as it happened, the second life of the Buddha, the Mahajanaka, was, the music of it was already at hand. And so I took that and adapted it. And I therefore became sucked into the Jataka tales. And I wanted to study them more carefully. So as a result, I decided to set another Jataka tale as an opera and to combine it with dance as well so that it became sort of a new art form which included both dance as well as poetry, music, and drama. So, so here I was com composing a third opera of the 10 lives of the Buddha. And one day, as I was sitting at my computer, slogging away, I realized that I had to do all 10. And that if I did all 10, it would, by definition, be the largest piece of art, of performing arts ever created, because Wagner had a mere, a mere four operas. <laughs> and <laughs> so there we are. And here, and, and now we come to the crux of this. You see, lightning has struck, and there are two things that are at stake here. One is hubris. It's all about, okay, how, why should I challenge the greatest icon of classical music. How, how dare I do this? Because this is, is on a great peak. It's sort of like God himself. And the other thing is this. How, how dare I? I mean, the other, after the hubris, there is the humility, you see. The humility is, this is too big, too complicated, too vast, and I am not worthy to un untie the shoelaces of Wagner. And, and all these. So these are the two con conflicting things that, that, that leap through your mind when a large idea strikes. And I think you have to sort of uh, decide at this point, when the lightning is in your hand, what you're going to do. Now, the thing about the humility, the impossibility, the difficulty, uh, I've talked to many people uh, over my half century of, of writing books and, and music. And many of them say to me, I, I would love to write a large book. I would love to write an opera. I would love to write a symphony. And I've discovered that in most cases, what they would really like is not to write an opera or a symphony, but to have written an opera or a symphony. <laughs> in, other words, um, in other words, there's this big hoop of fire and the, on the other side, they think, is fame and acclaim and money and, 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 and adulation of, of millions of fans. And all they have to do is do this little thing of jumping through the fire. Uh, well, I've got to tell you that the fire is where it's actually at. <laughs> so you've got to first accept that you have to, you just have to, it just is that difficult. You just have to really do it. So unless you're prepared to accept that, you know, when the lightning strikes, just toss it aside. Uh, then, however, why are you doing it? And I think that there's only one real answer, because in that single moment, when you have to decide whether to create it or not to create it, in that single moment, you are the only person in the whole universe with that power. And in that single second, you're sort of like God, you see. And now, one nanosecond later, you're a human being again. So that's the nanosecond where you have to decide to do it. So I'm going to show you a two-minute video that tells you about this project, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
Thank you so much.